gotta be me. You saw what those stones did to Thanos? They almost killed him. None of you could survive. How do we know you will? We don't. But the radiation's mostly gamma. It's like, uh, I was made for this. Good to go? Yeah? Let's do it. Do you remember, everyone Thanos snapped away five years ago, we're just bringing them back to now, today. Don't change anything from the last five years. Got it. It's okay. Hi everybody, it's Charlie. Surprise, surprise, the producers and the writers of Avengers Endgame revealed a big Red Hulk scene that didn't make it into the final cut of the movie, so we'll break it down. There's a new round of that Avengers Endgame Blu-ray giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your biggest Marvel Phase 4 theory on the video. I'll name a new winner at the end of this. Everybody's been asking about Red Hulk ever since we got Avengers Infinity War. Are we going to see Thunderbolt Ross ever become Red Hulk? Well, the Red Hulk scene that the producers and the writers told us about is very different from people's expectations. It would have been very different from Red Hulk in the comics, and the reason why it didn't make it into the movie is very similar to the reason why they cut the Grey Hulk scene out of Avengers Age of Ultron, which I'll explain. If you guys don't know the Grey Hulk story, it's also pretty fascinating. But during Avengers Endgame, what was originally going to happen in this scene here that I put at the beginning of the video where Hulk is wielding the Infinity Gauntlet is that when Iron Man assembles his Nano Infinity Gauntlet, which is the official name that Marvel is giving it, the Nano Gauntlet, because it's made with Iron Man's nanotechnology, what happens is that Hulk detects the intense cosmic energy and gamma radiation coming off of the combined Infinity Stones and thinks that it's similar to the gamma that irradiated him, giving him his Hulk powers originally. So when he puts the Infinity Gauntlet on, in the theatrical cut, you can see the same thing happening to him that happened to Thanos when Thanos put the Mind Stone in the Gauntlet and combined all six. You see that giant arc of cosmic and gamma energy arcing across their bodies, and the reason they can soak that damage is because they're so powerful. Like when Thanos added one stone at a time, you see one arc of cosmic and gamma energy run up his body. When he added the second stone, you see two arcs go up and so on and so forth. The energy starts to stack, so it's not like you have six times that energy running up you. It grows exponentially, so that's why it kills normal humans that haven't been enhanced like Captain America. The reason why Captain America, as a lot of people wonder, didn't wear the Infinity Gauntlet is because Hulk was standing there and he's way more powerful. So if Hulk hadn't been there, if it had just been Captain America and Iron Man, then it would have been Captain America to wield the gauntlet and snap everyone back. But what happened in the original version of this scene where Hulk is snapping everyone back is that when he put the Infinity Gauntlet on, the combined gamma and cosmic energy from the gauntlet interacted with his own gamma energy and the catalytic reaction turned him into Red Hulk instead of just destroying his arm. The main reason why the writers revealed that that didn't make it into the final cut of the film is because, one, it was really confusing. It was a big change to the comics, and everybody kind of been asking for Red Hulk at some point, because Thunderbolt Ross is still alive, even though he had been snapped in that five-year time jump. That's why you never saw him at the beginning of the movie. He only appears at the funeral at the end, because he'd been snapped during that big five-year time jump. 
That's kind of the reason why they didn't do Grey Hulk during Avengers Age of Ultron. The story that Joss Whedon told about Grey Hulk, because obviously the Grey Hulk in the comics is Joe Fixit, and it's very different from what Joss Whedon was talking about when he was talking about his Grey Hulk scene. What was supposed to happen is that Scarlet Witch, when she messes with his mind and he hulks out, she messes with him so much that he's supposed to go world breaker Hulk mad. The way Joss Whedon talked about it is that what happens if the Hulk were already the Hulk and then hulks out on top of that? What's the Hulk's version of the Hulk? When they were editing this big fight scene with Iron Man, he had the visual effects artist push his color crazier and crazier. But what happened is, is that he started to look gray. So Joss Whedon is like, oh, OK, this is starting to turn into a gray Hulk scene. So after a while, he just decided that it got too confusing for test audiences. They would have needed to have a whole separate scene explaining who this different color, this different version of the Hulk is. So that's why he pulled way back on it, effectively getting rid of the Grey Hulk stuff during the movie and then went to Kevin Feige while they were still working on the film and said, here's a big twist, a Grey Hulk twist that you can always use in a future movie if you want. So it's basically the same situation with Red Hulk in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, a big twist that they can always use in Marvel Phase 4 or Marvel Phase 5 if they want to. Because Mark Ruffalo is still around, they still have that big deal with Universal that's making it hard for them to release a solo Hulk film. So there will still be Hulk stuff going on during Marvel Phase 4 and Marvel Phase 5, but there are a couple big twists that they haven't used yet. But they haven't made any promise that it would be the Thunderbolt Ross version of Red Hulk. There's just an idea that a Red Hulk might pop up at some point. If you're not familiar with where the Red Hulk in the comics came from, it's actually right out of World War Hulk. I know everybody wants World Breaker Hulk within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. When are we going to get World Breaker Hulk? The funny thing is, is that comic book World Breaker Hulk was used to create comic book Red Hulk. So during World War Hulk, Hulk goes full World Breaker, turns on all his former friends. Iron Man and the other heroes developed a last ditch way to depower him using Earth's satellites getting rid of all this cosmic and gamma energy that was inside of him. While this was going on, the Intelligentsia, which is MODOK and a bunch of the other smartest villains in the Marvel comic book universe, got together and developed a way to hack Iron Man's special technology that he was going to use on the Hulk. They knew that they needed a weapon that they could control that could fight people like the Hulk and the other heroes. They knew it was just going to be a matter of time before they came back for them to stop them from trying to take over the world. So in the middle of World War Hulk, while Hulk is fighting the Sentry to a standstill, Iron Man activates his anti-Hulk weapon protocol. And because it's happening in such a panic, he doesn't have time to double check the math or make sure that everything's working correctly. He just fires the weapon off. The weapon is meant to depower him back into banner form so that they can actually deal with him. But while this is happening, MODOK, who has hacked this technology, siphons off all that cosmic and gamma energy and puts it into another person, creating the Red Hulk. That person just happened to be the resurrected body of Thunderbolt Ross, who was working with the Intelligentsia. So when he started out in the comics, Red Hulk was this big villain. He was a big asshole that everybody wanted to get rid of. Eventually, he regains his sanity and turns into more of an anti-hero, working with some of the more morally gray superheroes. He goes on a bunch of cosmic adventures. He does a bunch of crazy things. Just recently, because of absolute carnage, if you guys haven't been reading that story arc, they just killed the character off. Carnage came for him because at one time he had a symbiote. That's a whole different story. Because they're getting ready to start shooting the Venom sequel, the Venom vs. Carnage movie, I will talk about more Venom and Carnage, absolute Carnage stuff, if it's relevant to what's going on during the movie. But leave all your video requests in the comments below. And let me know in the comics, if they do, Red Hulk, because William Hurt is getting up there in years, if he's not able to come back and play the actual Red Hulk in like five or six years, what would you want them to do with that character? Because I know everybody wants to see him at some point. We're all waiting on She-Hulk, Amadeus Cho, pretty much any other version of the Hulk you could think of. Because, I mean, obviously they're going to keep making Marvel movies till the heat death of the universe. So at some point we will see these characters. And I'm sure eventually Marvel will find a way to get the rest of the rights back from Universal so that they can do another Hulk solo film at some point. But that might not happen till way down the road after Mark Ruffalo isn't playing the character anymore. So really speculation that would just wind up being a different version of that character. But most Motion capture technology is getting so perfect that Mark Ruffalo could probably play the Hulk for another 10 years without any big problems. I'm working on Spider-Man Far From Home deleted scenes. That video should post pretty soon. Congratulations to the giveaway winner from my last big Marvel video, Cinema Dog 2 Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. 
Everybody click here for my Venom 2 teaser video, Venom vs Carnage, and click here for my video about Amazon's The Boys series, basically Dark Justice League. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.